Okay, it's raining out, so it might be a little loud in here. My buddy Teddy came in here to get out in the rain and get some lunch. So to get this piston off, I ended up having to pull those two Teflon pads off first. Put some oil in there. I did a little bit of LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner around that piston pin. And then I just used, uh, once I had those pads off, I heated it up and I just used a punch of the right size and just gently tapped it until it came out. This head should come right off also, just like the other one. This is cylinder number two. So the kicker is you need to have this connecting rod be able to slide back and forth and full throw on this so you can kind of pop that end cap off out just enough so you can get a fingernail in there and pull it out like that and then be able to do the same with the other side too hopefully or maybe you can drive that out like this and make it a hell of a lot easier on yourself so the other thing that's good is if you can get this thing going back and forth you're also helping to facilitate that pin to come out that's where some LA's maybe will come in handy here, help dissolve some of this a little bit. I want to have it sliding back and forth as good as possible so that when I go to oil it and heat it up, tapping that pin out isn't as difficult. I've got it moving pretty good here. Now it's just a matter of getting some more oil and heat on that thing. Just tapping it out. Let's see if my ring is completely free. That's a good thing. I'm going to safeguard that. So what I did was I would set it like this and just tap down very gently on that while supporting the connecting rod. And which gets kind of tough because when you heat that thing up, it makes it a little bit harder. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on here. And unfortunately I can't do this under camera because I have to do it on the side of my bench. So, Okay, so let me zoom way in here. So when properly clean and sliding like I had it, it's really just a matter of just barely tapping that thing out. It took very little effort to get that thing to come out. Now you see the nice caramel color all over these pistons, which would indicate they did have some run time on them. I'm hoping that by the time these come out of the ultrasonic, that will be completely brand new looking. So here we are. I got two more heads to get off, and then we can Get these connecting rods off. Okay, so all four heads are off and we're to the point that for me is probably one of the most nerve-wracking things to do when disassembling and or reassembling this, these engines is getting the connecting rods off. So I have a very precise ground Tool here is a 1.5 millimeter which is what's required to get in there it's got a pretty big diameter so I should be able to break it free what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with cylinder number one one two three four so one but I'm going to be going in the head side of two to access those screws those screw heads but before I do that just as a matter of course I'm going to heat it up a little bit 
just to help facilitate in case that's necessary. Alright, so wish me luck here. And this is one where it's really critical to make sure you get full engagement. Now this one broke free pretty easily. There's our tiny little screw. I'm going to set it off to the side here real quick. Now these are, they have, connecting rods have an orientation. And the end piece can't be in the wrong orientation and the connecting rod has a forward and aft orientation too. So I'm going to try really hard here to keep the orientation as it is. Put a little pressure on the connecting rod here so that it doesn't just drop off, hopefully. Come on, screw, come out. Oh shit, that's not what I wanted to have happen. Alright, well I got the orientation of this connecting rod. That was forward. So forward on this one. Hopefully you can see that little cut out there. Forward had that little dot. It's not a cut out, it's a dot. So then, therefore, this side also has a dot. See how this side doesn't? No dot. Dot. So the dots align and the dots went forward. So I'm saying that very clearly on the video so that when I go to look at this video to reassemble it, I'll freaking remember. Dots face forward towards the propeller of the engine. So that was connecting rod number one. For cylinder number one, because this was cylinder number one, see I was all worn out, this is one, two, three, four. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for two, except these screws need to go in cylinder one this container. Service tension of that oil is really holding those things on there. All right. Hopefully, I did all that in frame of the camera because I wasn't really looking. Anyway, so now we're down to the block, and that's probably a good stopping point for now since I've got other things to do. But before we go, listen. These bearings don't really, I mean, I hear them. They don't really feel all that bad. I don't know. They're getting replaced anyway, or at least it's all coming apart regardless, so.